Hi everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching. This week's scrapbook layout is another old vintage photo. This is of my great grandmother, so we call her Little Nanny. So she's the lady in the middle holding the baby. The young girl to the right is my nan and the baby is Gillian. So this picture we've we've worked out it's about 1948 because my nan is 11 or 12 in the picture and she was born in 1936. So yeah, it's it was definitely before the 50s. So um, I just love these old pictures. This is a copy, so it's not the original because you'll see me distressing it and all kinds of things in a minute. So <laughs> don't worry, it wasn't the original photo, but it's a lovely, lovely picture. So I needed to scrapbook it. So what I'm doing here is I've just brought in some of my white homemade embossing paste and I've just mixed in some yellow ink because I want to try and match the paste to the background paper that I've got there. That's just a really, really old stash of, uh, you know, scrapbook layout papers. I wouldn't have a clue where it's from. And um, it's just it's just got a distressed look about it, which I liked. So. Although the picture is taken at the beach, we think it was probably the Isle of Wight because that's where they used to holiday a lot. But it could also be along the coast, uh, you know, around London, Portsmouth, all that kind of south east kind of area. OK, so the stencil I've got here is a stamping up one and it's got kind of a swooshy kind of look about it, which kind of looks a little bit, you know, like... The waves I guess I didn't want to have a you know a particularly seaside looking layout but I did want to kind of keep some maybe the shapes and the little elements of it which you'll kind of see as I go anyway so I'm just going along with my spatula and just spreading out that embossing paste to create a kind of strip going through the center of this 12 by 12 layout so in between each time I'm using my heat gun just to get that heat set and then I can keep kind of layering up. Now I don't want it completely straight so I start coming down. I want it to, you know, look a little bit incomplete. Some bits are more lumpier than others. And so it's, yeah, again, it's a vintage picture. I wanted a vintage layout. I didn't want any straight lines. I don't want anything perfect. So I've, you can see here, I'm just kind of a bit haphazard with it and just kind of go wherever I want. And again, just bring in my heat tool, heat set it, and then go in again. It dries very quick. This particular recipe that I've been using for a long time, you know, works really well. So now I'm bringing in some fabric. Now the funny story with this fabric is my auntie told me, and I've got very vague memories of my nan telling me as well, but the little kind of bikini that she was wearing in the picture, my little nanny, so her mother made for her. So again, you're talking 1940s. And when it got wet, it went see-through, <laughs> which you can imagine for anybody, any age, that's embarrassing. But for a, you know, a young girl, 11, 12, yeah, it's, that's not good. So um, <laughs> again, I'll have to get my nan to tell me this story again because yeah, I, I can imagine it was, she can laugh a lot about it now. But I wanted to just have an element of this fabric, which looked, I think, quite similar. I mean, I don't know what color that was, but it's got flowers on it. And I just thought it was a nice little touch to the layout. So I've just gone around there with my nail file, just distressed up the edges. And then I'm just using some of my little kind of decorative edges here and I'm using the end of my heavy scissors there just to hammer them in but it was just a nice little touch and it added a bit of gold because this is kind of a yellowy golden kind of layout. Now that fabric you know wasn't the correct colour to match the layout so the same ink that I've used to dye the embossing paste I've just added to some water in a little bowl and I'm just kind of soaking that strip of fabric I didn't leave it in there for too long. It's a pretty um, strong ink. So the, the fabric, it was only a linen, but it did take to it quite well. So you can see there how much darker that's gone. And again, it just looks a lot more distressed. You could use um, coffee or tea as well to stain your fabrics. Now, again, I'm just going through and heat setting that. And you can just see, I've just taken it out of shot slightly there. But whilst I was, whilst I was doing that, I put in these wood little kind of shapes of lighthouses, anchors, a clock, shell, um, starfish. Again, so they're that sea kind of theme, but without it being really in your face. Now, again, I wanted to make the most of that water. So I've just brought in some doilies and just, again, just soaking them up. Now these are paper and obviously adding paper to water, it did make it very weak, but I was pretty quick with it. I didn't leave this in long at all. So I popped them in, didn't need that last one and then take those straight out. I did add a bit more color just to 
get a bit more of a, a deeper, um, more of an orange brown um, as opposed to a yellow. And then they get taken straight out and get heat set. Now, because I didn't move them around or pull them out or anything, which is, you know, what you really want to do when you're using paper. Um, once you use the heat tool against that, it's much, much better. And you can see there, I'm just being really careful with my tweezers, just pulling them apart just a little bit. And then I will get straight into that and just start heat setting it so it dries up and it goes really kind of um, really crisp. And um, you get that real kind of where the, the water's kind of sat in amongst the creases, you get a much deeper part of colour. You can see there, they've come out really, really well. I was really pleased with them. Some parts are lighter, some are really dark, some of it's a little bit ripped, but it looked really good. So now I'm bringing in my Distress Oxide, Tim Holtz, this is Vintage Photo, which I always use for distressing. And I just die cut a tag. And um, I don't know why, I just think because of the 40s and the war and tags and I, it just, yeah, I just kind of pulled that one out and just thought that would work quite well with this layout. Again, just using that nail file to uh, distress the sides there. And um, I used a little hole punch for the top there as well, but that's going to have a nice piece of ribbon through it. I'll put a little eyelet on it as well. And um, yeah, that will look good. So again, just distressing it up and crinkling the, the cardstock. You know, using the um, the distress oxide on the creases and that, and you can see just how quickly you can get these bits. So while I've got the ink out, I'm just going through all of those little wood veneers that I had as well. So I'm just really preparing everything. There was a lot of layers to this layout, a lot of texture to this layout, and I just wanted to get that all ready, and then I can kind of play around with the positioning and where I'm going to put it all. So just the last of those little bits there. So now I start to bring everything in. And kind of play around really so this this did take me a while this whole layout took me about two hours to do because there was a lot of you know obviously elements that I wanted to bring into it and it's another way to make all of your bits match you know I none of this matched to start with but I've you know by using that um, you know that watercolor and, and things like that it's it really does work so now I've got another sheet of that same paper and I'm just creating a strip to go through the center again I just wanted another kind of element I wanted another texture and something just to kind of sit everything along I guess so I'm just distressing that up the same way and then I'll get that piece glued in right across the center so it covers up a bit of that um, embossed embossing paste but there's so much of it going up you know the top and the bottom as well that you you know it's it's not getting lost at all and it's not until you look closely at this that you really then appreciate all the different kind of parts to it anyway so now that picture was quite thin because it was a copy. It wasn't done on a strong piece of card. So I'm just adding a piece of craft card to the back just to give it some support and the slight weight of those metal edges as well just made it a little bit floppy. So I just wanted to create more of a, a sturdier piece really. So now that's a much stronger um, photo to use because obviously it's going to be, you know, stuck on top of lots of bits. So again, I'm just playing around, moving it. Now I've got that strip. It just, everything seemed to kind of tie in a little bit better. And um, I just, I really, really enjoy this. I keep looking at that picture and um, the man to the left, he's got these, you know, really high waisted. They were very fashionable, I know, you know, I imagine back in the day, but those um, swimming trunks that he's wearing were cracking me up every time I looked at it. And I'm not sure what my nan's thinking as she looks across to Gillian, her sister, who's the baby. And that's again why we know that it's roughly 1948 because of Gillian's age and how old she was in the picture. She was only probably about eight or nine months there. And um, just everybody looks really happy. And the fact that there's a photo taken this long ago, you know, it's, you've got to cherish these pictures. And I love, you know, love looking through old pictures. So I'm starting to commit, as I say now, to the page and I'm sticking everything down. So I just use my hot glue for the fabric and then for the tag. I put it on a little bit of um, foam and again I'm putting some foam to the right hand side of the picture and then I'll just put some hot glue to the left just so the levels stay the same and I haven't got anything kind of you know higher than the other and it looks a bit odd so you can see there I've just used the hot glue on that left bit so that is now in that's it can't move it it's done <laughs> I always get a bit nervous when I do that bit because I think oh no what if I think of something else but no, I was pretty confident. So I'm just bringing in some more of that embossing paste just again, just to create a little bit of mess, really. <laughs> no other reason, just more texture, more more bits to look at. And um, yeah, I just, yeah, it's what I like to do. And then just slowly start bringing in all the bits and pieces. So all those lovely little wood veneers, I'm doing a nice little cluster towards the, the bottom left there. And um, just, just play around. I kept 
you know, getting up, looking around, seeing what other bits I had. I didn't actually find too many other bits. I do bring in some hardware in a minute. And um, again, just to bring another texture to the layout and that more, you know, it was I was just finding anything vintage, anything old that I thought would work well on this layout. So again, it's always the hot glue that I use if I'm using anything really that's not paper. So fabrics and, um, you know, wood and things like that. The hot glue is the best glue for that, really. And it's quick. You know, the, the layouts take a while anyway. I don't want to be stood with, you know, wet glue for ages holding it down. Whereas when you just use your heat gun, it's, it is straight away and, and then you can move on. So all those little bits, like I said, there's the little shell, the anchor, the clock, lighthouse, the ship's wheel. And there was another little anchor there, but I didn't use that one. So now I want to choose my title and I just put a moment in time. You know, I wasn't there and it is just that little moment captured. And I just thought that was a really nice title. So yeah, a moment in time. I'm bringing in those craft card um, letters again. They just seem to work really well when I do vintage layouts and I need to find some more of them because in a minute they're going to be gone and I'll, I'll I want more and I like them because they're thin so you can cram in a very long title into your 12 by 12 without having to drop down another line or use smaller letters so I think that's why I like them a lot as well and then I've just used my T ruler there just to get it all nice and lined up and I've just added some glue to the back because I don't trust the adhesive that they come with and then I've just gone and distressed the tops of it as well with that vintage photo distress oxide again just to lift them a little bit and you can really see that title, it really pops. And then I'm also now attacking that photo. So I'm, you know, messing it, messing it up, mucking it up, <laughs> whatever, that's what I'm doing. Now I'm deciding on little kind of quotes, little phrases to put in the title, or sorry, to put next to the photo. And these are the Tim Holtz. I can't remember what the name of these ones are, but there's brilliant, you get so many of them. There literally are tons and tons and tons. So I've just pulled out a few of the titles there, which I can't I can't see them when I'm doing my edit. I'm doing my voiceover here and the picture that I follow is quite small, but I'll tell them again in a minute. And I just wanted to kind of touch on the decade as well of this layout and the photo. So I've just put the 40s. Now I do want to find the word style. I didn't want to stamp it, but I think when I find the right sticker, I'm going to add that just below the 40s there. So it says 40s style. Now I'm just adding some ribbon, some matching ribbon through the top of that tag and just tying it off there with another bit of ribbon just to kind of keep it together. And then just make sure you always seal your edges. To be fair, with this being a vintage layout, it wouldn't have mattered if I'd let, let it kind of just fray. That would have looked good as well. But I just kept this one so that it, it wouldn't really. And then I'm just sticking the tails down to the, the actual layout as well, just so they don't get kind of caught. They shouldn't do because they sit in plastic sleeves anyway, but I just thought it'd be best to just kind of stick it down a little bit just so you can kind of see it better. Now, I had a little bit of that scrap kind of where I was um, fraying the, the fabric. You can see it there. And it's just another nice little texture. So I'm just adding a kind of clump of it. And then I've got this old vintage key really really old this is it's naturally tarnished um or patinaed look you know it's, it's it's all natural i haven't had to do anything to that so that's the best kind of bits to use the real vintage stuff so i've just put one there now i wanted to kind of touch on the fact that that man in his swimming trunks really makes me laugh so i've just used one of the um rosie studio puffy stickers and it says lol just lol and i'm gonna just stick that just by him and I just thought that was really good. So now I'm just covering the picture with a bit of scrap card and I'm just spraying some of the ink side. I can't remember the color and um, just spraying some splotches really across the layout. You've got to be quite confident when you do this because it is quite scary because you've just done all that work and then you're just spraying something over the top of it. But I've used it before and I need to get more colors to be honest. I've got others, but some of them have dried up and gone a bit ugh and um, just heat set them. So that just, again, just gives another pattern, another another part to the, the layout. Now, I do like these craft card letters when they've got some glossy accents over the top. And it, again, it just really makes them pop. And I'd done that on the one that I'd done of my granddad and myself. So I've just done that again on this one. And then I just added another little bit of hardware there. It was just this kind of like, it looked like a brooch. And that's the layout complete. 
Really, really loved this. It made me smile. It was a joy to make. And that's what scrapbooking is. And that's what it should do. It should bring you joy and make you happy. And yeah, it's just nice to remember those moments that I'm not even part of, you know, I was not even a thought there. <laughs> but um, anyway, there you have it. So really, really nice. Very vintage, very antique looking layout this week. Lots and lots of fun. Lots of kind of techniques have been used in this one. But as I always say, there's again no right and wrong <laughs> you saw what I done I just done whatever I wanted and um, you could still add even more like I said I'm going to add the word style but you can see all the detail there it looks really really fun and um, yeah I hope you've enjoyed it as always so oh I forgot to say what the the words were I think uh, it's coming up now so I ended up pulling out of the stickers play in the beach and remember something the happiness we well, isn't that bad i can't even see the picture as it's flicking past anyway you can see it <laughs> until next week guys bye